Because mm. you know, she's got quite nice skin. Well, not quite nice. It's like very smooth. Yeah. Have you got makeup on, like camera makeup no. on? That's okay. money. Money does that. Oh. I'm just joking. <laughs> Pastor Toby is literally like the biggest troll. Like I thought 6 9 was bad, but this guy's actually a troll. He's always saying something that he shouldn't be saying and say, oh, I'm just joking. Like, allow it. Just stop saying it because I think he's literally just trying to get people's attentions. But he's just literally winding people up on, to, on purpose because he knows he's going to get a reaction. So I just finished the interview with ZZ and Pastor Toby and there's a lot to get into. But before we do, please like, comment and subscribe. So I don't expect someone in that position to be covered in drip. I don't even expect a pastor should really be even saying drip, but that's neither here nor there. He was saying that I wear the clothes I have. You have to buy it though. I'm sorry, like, that doesn't make any sense. I don't expect a pastor to be making noise about Fendi. Let me keep it real. I don't own anything Fendi. I live a regular, regular life. I don't believe in the drip. He can buy clothes from Top Man, Hugo Boss, or whatever like men buy clothes from. He doesn't have to go to Louis Vuitton, Fendi. He was even naming brands that I'm sorry, even I didn't even know because I'm not about that life. I'm a very simple girl. But he does it to get attention, like that's a part of the floss. And I just feel like he, a lot of young people are attracted to him because of what he has. And they're thinking, oh, if I come to this church, I can acquire that type of wealth. And I agree, he does get attention wearing these type of clothes. But I don't think it's the right message that we should be giving to young people that we should aspire to wear drip. That doesn't create generational wealth, having clothes. Because as soon as you buy Fendi, it depreciates. It doesn't appreciate. It's not like gold or paintings or real estate. It depreciates. So all this type of thing, all these type of clothes he's wearing is not encouraging anything good for young people. Also, I think someone said in an interview that he said that, oh, if Jesus was on earth, he would be covered in drip. Like, first of all, that's to me disrespectful. But two, if he knows knows anything about the bible jesus was very very humble and i just feel like pastors should be the same way it's not about what you wear it's about what you say it's about your message all the aesthetics is absolutely irrelevant but that's the main attraction to him is his aesthetic staying on the topic of drip he was talking about an ap watch first of all this was the first time today was i was today's years old that i found out one ap watch was i've never heard of it before it cost 23 thousand pounds on a watch and he's saying people are just giving it out who gives out watches yeah people don't even give out like argos watches let alone watches that cost twenty three thousand pounds are you serious oh yeah just before i came to like people are giving out watches for free for nothing no there's something fishy about it i'm sorry i just would never believe that people are giving out watches like that as if they're giving out haribos i'm just not gonna believe it i'm so sorry it doesn't make sense and if it doesn't make sense it's not true but if it is true i need to have friends that be handing out watches like and again the reason why this whole drip thing isn't great is because i didn't even know about this thing called drippy dance but it's like only the people that have drip can come and do this dance in front of the church so those that don't have drip can't go to the front and will feel isolated and they may start doing things like zz said to get to the position where they could be doing the drippy dance who wants to do that that's embarrassing like to be dancing about your what you've been able to acquire or what you're wearing like who cares like who actually cares because trust and believe some of those people that are doing the drippy dance are wearing the same drip to church every sunday one thing that he said that quite irritated me was that he was speaking so negatively of the black community he was saying that we're broke we can't read we're deprived of success we're not a community now there definitely are elements of the black community that doesn't show community however overall I don't think that's the case. He is disrespecting the black community as if he doesn't get his money from the black community because when I've ever watched anything about Spuck Nation, 90, what, 9% of the audience are black people. So it's just like, what are you talking about? Like, black people support you. It's not white people that are supporting you. It's black people that are supporting you in this church, especially because you're AF. A lot of AF people go to AF churches. You, you, that's just how we do, you know what I mean? So it's like, when he's referencing like, other churches, a lot of black people go to African churches or Caribbean churches. That's just what we do because we stay within our community. I've never been to the Church of England to, to listen to service. That's just not where my mum brought me to as a child. So he needs to not isolate his main congregation while he's waffling. And the reason why this is being spoken about is because the people that 
are affected are speaking about it these are other black people that have been wronged by someone in the church or by the church itself and are speaking about it that's why it became relevant it's been on the huffington post it's been on the bbc it's been on youtube and by using those platforms people are able to say their perspective and what happened to them which they're all entitled to do and don't get me wrong i don't believe he's the only pastor or priest that's doing something wrong there are loads but again when something directly affects you you speak on it more a point that zz raised that was really great was that people are getting ordained in a short amount of time now me personally for me i feel like if i'm going to go to a church the person needs to be an adult and when i say an adult i am an adult but i mean someone that is older than me someone that has experience someone that you know what I mean, has, has had enough time to learn the word and to really become into the world and just really gain a lot of experience. So, but if I was ordained at my, my age right now, I just feel like I wouldn't be prepared to deliver the word. I'm not saying other people can't be prepared to deliver the word, but I just feel like 300 like priests or ministers or whatever he calls them generals, it just doesn't seem like what is the requirements to do that how do you know this person is ready to give that word realistically speaking is he even ready to be given the word so maybe not so maybe of course if he's not ready then he's not ready to to delegate and naturally like in any sort of organization the head is what gets looked at so he is directly responsible for the wrongs of people he delegates to do things for because it's all in the name of the church they're doing it for SPAC nation to even say the church itself is not wrong he's still responsible for the people that he's putting in positions of power that are offending or abusing their power i'm not saying people can't change but you have to be mindful by putting people in positions of power especially if someone has been a previous money launderer you cannot put them in a position of power to be controlling money. That doesn't make sense. One plus one equals two. Let's not make it ten. Simple. Another thing that he said that was quite like, was when he said, what is force? Now, there is a difference between someone wanting to give and manipulation. However, he tried to say some people are just dating. I'm sure every single case has not got to do with someone dating somebody else and encouraging, encouraging them. And there's nothing wrong with encouraging per se. But... I don't think he was addressing all cases like the ones that we heard it doesn't seem that anything he had to do with any of those things like for example the girl i remember being on universal tax credit and then they're them putting that she had two kids what has that got to do with a relationship i feel like zizi could have asked way more direct questions because based on those documentaries there's specific ones that he should know about because these were definitely ones that were in the inquiry i'm i'm assuming so he she could have really asked those types of things why would it be the case that someone is going on benefits and you need their code what has them being on benefits got to do with anybody in the church in the bbc documentary there was evidence of like text messages and stuff so people should have been let go of reprimanded whatever but it doesn't appear that anyone was and it just seems like he's just not willing to take responsibility that anyone in his church could be bad he kept on saying it was two thousand people two thousand people we're not talking about the members we're not talking about the congregation we're talking about people that you employ people that you put in responsibility and they abuse it that's the people we're speaking about and going back to what i said in the beginning about him being a troll look at him saying oh drama is fine drama is good like i don't think drama is i don't want no drama in my life lord i don't but he sees the whole thing about controversy brings chatter chatter brings attention attention is good that's how he sees it that's why i compared him to six nine because six nine uses that exact same model and i don't think a priest should be encouraged by negative press i don't think that's a good thing but for him he's just always seen like the marketing thing or being relevant he said it at the end being relevant you don't need to be relevant when you're doing God's word. That's what I'm saying. He's too concerned about the, the noise. Be concerned about your word and that's it. To be fair, I believe he probably has helped people. I do believe so. People that were a member of gangs or people that probably didn't have prospects or were looking for guidance. I'm sure he has helped them just to give them more structure, to give them more um, ideas of what to do with themselves. I believe he has done that. And even just a sense of community. I believe he has helped people. I, I genuinely do. However he cannot ignore the fraud and it, it's happened several times over that it doesn't appear to be a one-off oh it's just this one bad general or this one bad person no it seems to be a pattern and because he's not willing to acknowledge it it seems like it's a part of the makeup of the church and that's what's not good i'm sorry i will not be attending any church that a priest is driving around in a lambo not me not i i will not be attending any church like that to me it's not it doesn't make sense he's talking about the church's rent is over a million pounds 
pounds but he's living in a 2.3 million pound house and he's driving around in the lambo who is paying for that because he said he has other businesses i don't think he actually even said it. it's easy ox but i don't think he actually said it what other businesses do you have and if you do have other businesses we should be able to find it on company's house because we should be able to just simply type in your name and anything associated with your name should be one of your businesses it shouldn't be hard to find i don't know why he's being so secretive about how he makes his money outside of the church especially because people are accusing him of using church money so he still manages to be secretive. He's just one of those people that knows how to talk, talk, talk. You end up getting tired. He confuses you. You're delirious. No, for someone like that, you need to come with energy. You need to come with your facts. These you should have came with them Bible scriptures that said things about drip. Of course, the Bible doesn't say drip. But I don't know what Bible scripture specifically, but I even spoke to my mum about it yesterday. And she was like, the Bible doesn't talk about materialism or doesn't praise materialism as a good thing the most humble people were the were the greatest people in the bible from what i know from what my mom knows i don't recall the ones that usually were showing off were greedy those were the ones that were bad but let me not get into it too much because i'm not gonna lie i don't read the bible but i know my, i know a little something something there were definitely some parts of the interview were, that were funny when <laughs> zizi was like if i had a younger brother would i prefer him to go cunch or spagnation <laughs> like how are those the options like what are you deciding if like come on zizi literally hilarious i'm sure those that were conned have filed police reports and those individuals probably are under investigation however i think that's how they should do it probably not the church as a whole because there probably isn't enough evidence but the individual people y'all can get them because there will be enough text messages and i'm sure if they've done it to one they've done it to others so i think those people should definitely be dealt with accordingly maybe the perception of the church being a fraud church may be removed if those people are convicted and um, are held accountable. I think Zizi could have been a lot more harder but I think she is a fair person overall and some of the things he said did make sense I won't lie however I think there's still more mm -mm, non nitty gritty questions that she could have asked like for example one thing that triggered me while watching the documentary was when he said it's nothing for an average person to give a thousand pounds a week to the church. Where do you expect these people to get this money from? I am 24 years old. I make good money for my age i don't have the money to i don't i don't make four grand in a month i just don't so there's no way i can even give that type of money even if i wanted to like i don't understand where he's thinking these people are getting the money from not everyone's a business owner not everyone's business is going to be flourishing i think two in every three businesses go bust within the first five years so where are you expecting people to get the money from they're only going to get it from illegal means or kill themselves by working god knows how many jobs to be able to provide and give seed to the church you shouldn't be killing people to give money that's something that she needed to cover about the way they target young people and expecting exorbitant amounts of money from people that just don't have it and to make people feel worthless for not having it another thing she should have asked was where does this money go where does the money go like specifically where does this money go for example he said the church's rent again was a million pounds he wasn't making a million pounds in donations years prior he only made it i think last year and i don't know what he's making this year so it's one of those things like how was you paying that before how are you paying the rent on this house how are you paying for this this and that how are you paying for people to go to oxford how are you paying for people to go to harvard where is this money coming from i just wish he would have asked him about more specific cases even though he said that oh uh, the person that accused would know the answer if he's spoken to those people that were allegedly doing the conning he should be able to relay what they said about the situation like in the bbc panorama documentary one person said that they opened an account in her name then they opened a business account in her name and the money was sent to someone in the church make it make sense if she doesn't know about it make it make sense make it make sense because this is something that's affecting her credit for life so i wish she would have just addressed those specific claims rather than just looking at the investigation as a whole but overall the interview was great um this guy is actually a comedian i don't even take him seriously he's actually a comedian like how can he talk like the thing he said about Fendi was a madness. Offending people with Fendi. <laughs> it's like he's actually just a troll. Um, but I think he's probably one of those people that really enjoys attention and he feeds from attention. So I think as long as he gets it, he'll probably be happy with it. Um, but yes, thank you guys for watching this long review. Um, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.